Hey, how's it going guys? So what I'm going to do this time is actually do the same thing we did with our C++ Python uh, in CMake, but we're going to do it in Visual Studio for all you Windows users out there. Uh, I suspect that this is going to make everything a little bit easier for you going forward, and you're not going to have as much trouble uh, putting it all together and getting everything working in a, a very consistent fashion. So we're going to be following the uh, information provided by our 2-1 step setup guide. If you go to the rubric, you'll see the C++ Python Visual Studio Guide. Uh, you'll find here that, um, that there's this guide here that goes through on how to set it up for Visual Studio. We're going to do this, but we're actually going to do it in a slightly different way so that you can copy paste stuff around and it'll work on any computer without um, absolute path, a path anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the download Python page. So if you click this, it'll take you here. I already had it open uh, here. And we're just going to download the latest version of Python uh, for Windows, which will be an installer. Um, I'm going to do a custom installation and we're going to look into here. Um, we want, we, there's a couple things we want. We want uh, to have the debug binaries as well. And uh, what else do we need? Uh, mm, that's probably fine. And we'll install that. And uh, keep track of the path where it's going. Uh, I I kept track of it. It's going into users, app data, local programs, Python 3.10. There we go. So with that setup is successful. Uh, we will navigate to that folder. So by default, it's going to, on Windows 10, at least my version, it's going to see users, go to your user. It'll be in app data, which is a hidden folder. So if you can't see that, click view at the top, click hidden item, go to app data, local programs, Python, Python 3.10 is the one I just put in and you'll have everything here. Now there's a few things we want and there's a few things that, um, we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, create a new project. So we're going to create a new project. We're going to choose a C++ template and we're just going to choose empty project and we're going to hit next. We're going to call this 2.1 and I'm going to put underscore two because I already did this. I have a as a reference and we'll create that and keep track of your paths. It also also our source reports. All right. So we've got a new project here now. We, we want to set up some files um, for it. So the first thing, we're going to create a main main file. So we're going to just add a new C++ file. Uh, we're going to include IO stream. And we're going to make an int main into argc car argv. I think that's the thing. Then we want to return zero. And we will print hello world. right so let's do that and we'll run that just to make sure everything's uh, working correctly and you'll see it'll open up the project it'll print hello world and then it will end so we've got a basic project going we're going to open the project inside our file explorer like this now you're going to have two levels of directories your main level is going to be your solution directory then underneath that, you're going to have your project directory. We're going to do stuff in this project directory. Uh, we'll open, oops, we'll open Python next to it. And we want to do a couple things. So the first thing is we're going to, let's say we're going to make a, a lot of times you'll, you'll see it'll be called vendor or external or something like that. I like using the word external. So we're going to make an external directory here and we're going to call this uh, Python right and inside our python we're going to take our libs our include and our python uh dll's here those three those four dll's here and we're just going to paste them into this thing here um what i'm actually going to do here is just to make it a little bit easier we're going to make a folder here we're going to call it dll's and we're going to move the dll's into this dll's folder so we have all of our Python stuff uh, as an external file here. Now, also in this folder, we want a Python file uh, that we're going to run from uh, C++. So we're going to make a new, another folder. We're going to call this Python modules. 
And inside Python modules, we're going to make a new file, Let's make a text document, and just call it, um, uh, we'll call it my module, just like we did in the other video. And we'll put .py as the extension. If you can't see the extension, hit view, and there's file show file name extensions. Click that, and then rename it. You'll be able to change the extension, extension there. So with that done, we can now go back to Visual Studio and we need to add this mymodule.py. So you could either just drag and drop it like this, uh, or um, probably you can do add existing item and then Python modules, mymodule.py. And personally, I like to create a new filter here and just call this Python modules and put my module underneath there. And this is just so I can keep track of things uh, myself. Um, yeah, to keep track of things myself. So we've got all of this done. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to um, actually use Python, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add um, our include directories, which will are, include all the header files. So if you go back to the external folder that we copied, we have our include directories, which has all the .h files. And we also have the libs directory, which has all the libraries that we need. And these underscore d um, dot lib folder files are um, what allows you to run in debug mode instead of release mode. And it also, uh, when we did the install, why we went custom installation and uh, included the debug uh, modules or whatever it was called, included the debug thing that we did. So to do that, to set everything up, we're going to hit properties. And so our VC++ directories, um, you want to make sure you select configurations, all configurations, platforms, all, pa all platforms. And then inside uh, include directories here, you can hit edit and you can add this here. Now there are some uh, macros that you can use. You'll, you can find them here but uh, I know which ones we're using, so we're just going to hide this to make it easier to read. So here we're going to do use a macro called, uh, I think it's project dir. So you see it here, if we do here, uh, this should show the expanded slash uh, external slash Python slash include. And I don't think I need the, the slash here and slashes can go the other direction. There we go. So, you, oh, projector is not uh, what we're looking for. So let's, oh, it's one word. Um, it's, so instead of doing it like this, it's actually um, camel case. So it's projector like that. So you notice here, it expanded out to my project path, external Python include. And that's pretty much exactly what we wanted. For our library directory, we want to go to the libs folder. So we did include, now we want to do libs. So library directories, we just go inside here, hit edit. We want to add a new one here. And we can put the same thing, but we just put libs. Right? Now, with that done, we now should have access to all of Python. So if you look inside here, we've got number include, and if we do here, you'll see that we have python.h and there's no errors. So now if we want to run some, run some Python code, what we can do is we can initialize Python. We do py, Python initialize. We will finalize Python um, just to be clean. And we will just run uh, a basic hello world. So we can do py run simple string and we can do print uh, like this. Uh, give me a sec. Uh, we're going to hello world and we will do that like that and now if we run this we shouldn't get any errors uh, it cannot find python 310d.dll so I was wrong we did get an error and it's expected so on Windows, uh, you need to have access to these dynamic link libraries to be able to run the Python. This is basically where the runtime libraries live and how that they're accessed. So the easiest way to do it is um, 
you can uh, go inside here and inside this debug folder, add it here. You can add your DLLs here. Now this gets tedious if you're switching between debug and Win32 and all that. We want to automate the process, right? So that's one of the reasons we copy the DLLs inside here. So we're going to add some uh, build post build commands that will copy those over. So if you go back into your project properties, you're going to find at the bottom, make sure again, make sure you're on all configurations, all platforms. You'll find all configurations, all platforms, build events. And here you'll see that there are post build events. And we'll do here copy necessary runtime files, right? Um, I couldn't figure out how to make a second um, entry in this, but uh, we can do this. So inside here, we can edit here and we can add a command. So the command we're going to add is basically um, a command that will tell it to copy all the DLLs inside that DLLs folder into the runtime folder, right? So um, the command we're going to use is xcopy. It's going to be uh, slash y slash d. You'll use open quotes. Then we will use project dir again. So you see it expanded out. Then we want external DLLs, uh, Python DLLs star dash DLL. And that will copy all the DLLs, uh, anything with this uh, file name pattern into uh, the out directory. And that's what this is. So out directory is where, um, where your runtime execu executable is going to be. So if you hit OK now and hit apply, do this and you hit the build, it's going to build, build succeeded. You see four files copied here. And if we go back to that folder I showed you in our project folder, uh, solution folder x64 debug, you'll see now that we have all the DLL files, files here. So now when you run this, we get uh, it shows an error. Um, but it's a valid error. So it says that this was never closed. So we close the parentheses and we run this again and you'll see hello world. So now we're running Python in C++ and that's the basic integration. Now we also want to uh, bring in our module, right? So let's define a function inside here, define uh, my, we'll call it my function. And in here, we're gonna say print, uh, from my function, right? So we have a Python module, which um, has a function called my function. So uh, we'll go back to our C++ guide here and we're go just going to copy the code for um, using, that's just these three lines of code here, um, for importing a mod Python module and running a function from it. Uh, let's open this again paste that in. We can remove this, we can remove this, and we can remove this. So my function is called my function. My module is called my underscore module. And uh, we can remove this, right? So if we try to run this now, you're going to see that it's going to say uh, it's going to throw an error. And if we stop that, uh, there was, um, it's going to have an output somewhere. Oh, it's up here. So here you'll see, it says no module named my module. Now that's, uh, basically saying that it can't find, uh, this module, which makes sense because, um, what it's looking for, it's looking for a Python fi file called my module inside the runtime directory. So, just to show you uh, how it works, if we go inside our project, uh, we copy my module here into our running directory here. This should now work. You'll see from my function. So what it did is it looked inside this file folder here to find the Python module and then found it and then loaded it. Now we're gonna delete that. And what we wanna do is actually copy all of that 
automatically because um, let's say you want to make a, a whole bunch of Python modules and you want to switch between debug and release, just like the DLLs, you don't want to be copying all that around manually. So we're going to do that um, basically almost in exact same way that we did in uh, with the DLL. So go to your properties on your project go back to your post build event. You could also make it a pre build event if you wanted to. I'm just going to make it as part of our post build events. We're, you're going to make a new line in this command line, and we're going to make a new x copy command slash y slash d and this time slash capital I, which will mean that it's going to uh, say that it, it's going to assume that where you're pointing the out directory is uh, a directory and not a file. So that makes it so that um, if the directory doesn't exist, it will create it. So again, we will do uh, project dir, project dir. This time we will do Python modules and we will copy all the .py files into our out there. And this time it's going to be Python modules. Now, always check your evaluated value screen to make sure that it all uh, works. Cause if you misspell um, a variable, you'll see that it doesn't, it doesn't work properly, right? So uh, you always make sure that everything works properly. Hit okay, hit apply and hit play. Now, if we build this, we got an error. What is the error? Oh, uh, I forgot the uh, quotation mark at the end there. And if we build that, you'll see it says one file copied. And if we go back to our um, runtime directory here, you'll see we now have Python modules and my module underneath. And that's exactly what we were looking for, right? So what we're going to do now, if we run this, you're going to see that it doesn't work because we need to reference my module as if it were a Python module. And since it's in a folder, we need to reference the folder name dot the module name that we're looking for. And now when we build that, everything works properly. And that is how you uh, can set up your Visual Studio project without having to do any copying around manually and have everything run properly. And you can copy paste your entire solution give it off to your professor and you won't have any absolute paths inside your um, project settings which will mean that everything uh, will work right out of the box for everyone involved so uh, i hope you enjoyed all of that and we are available to answer any questions and help out on our cs hangout discord link down below and see you next time